understand that kind of depth of distance. When you are placed in a position where supposedly, you know, for you to move through life in a particular kind of way, you're going to have to take it. You're going to have to accept it. And when you begin to relish in your intersectionality, I mean, I call it basking in my negritude. Or <laughs> like, when you begin to relish your intersectionality, you begin to understand the nuances and you begin to break away this notion that you have to actually fit in a certain way. I think that there are multiple ways in which we begin to break modes as modes are you know, crafted for us. And I think that that's why I choose to be in the way, in the media that I, and to choose to be in the way that I am. I think that I was going to become a classical Shakespearean actor. I, I was studying, and I was fall staff my freshman year of college. I, you know, and I understand that I was on meter and stuff, and I, so there, even, even pushing against that, Right, I recognize that then the moment that I understood that I embraced rhythm, I embraced those things, that I could do that, I also recognize that media, the media, and that's all sorts of media, media was actually saying the opposite to me, and actually was saying, we're lucky that you're not lying on the ground. And that's the point in time, if you make it past 21, you'd be lucky to be alive. And why aren't you lying on the ground yet? And why aren't you dead or shot? So I think that, you know, the dis and the projection, the constant projection has been to be negated to being in a place where you are constantly thought, I'm not sure if I'm going to live because if I move through the street because of media, I say it's media, and I say media like it's something that's larger enough, it was also us. Yeah. We reinforce it every time we add and subtract or we are, we are, we are helping to reinforce and calculate that thing, that I think that the moment that I begin to break against that and actually dealt with the dissonance, and actually then said the dissonance is at this point in time, because it may shift. Yeah. I'm not dealing with, you know, I, I don't, I'm not dealing with the same kind of dissonance or the same kind of thing where people actually were throwing bricks at me when I was in school. I'm not dealing with the same kind of thing, different, different kind of dissonance, right? But I think what you're constantly saying is that, how do you exist in that constant dissonance and I say that's, again, I bask in my negritude, I affirm my place, I find my spiritual practice, I do my chant, I meditate. You know, like these are the practices we develop as counterculture to that. And I think that art lives in the depth of media. It can also be counterculture when we make these choices. And then you're making, we make these choices, create this only legacy work that rather than reinforces the mode, breaks it open, complicates it, and asks us to be our true selves and then calls into this room to identify and say, yeah, that's your true self. And so when we go out, we can get them pushed against the media that says, well, no, you can't be that. So I think we carry that with ourselves, and I ask we can continue to carry that.